Okay, good morning. <coughs> Lovely audience here. As Dr. Rosen said, I'll speak in English, you can see it. My German simply is not good enough. You would not understand anything of what I have to say. I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. So, good morning again, and how are you? Fine, thank you. thank you. Same here. When I ask that phrase, when I use that phrase, how are you? Only three words. It's just a phrase. It's not really a question and you all answer fine. You don't expect a true or real answer. You use it every day when you meet colleagues, friends, and any other, anyone else. But if I would emphasize the words a little bit different, if I would ask, how are you? And then when I look at you, or look at you, it is a serious question and it requires an answer because I'm interested in what you have to tell me. It's really asking how well are you? I'm interest, interested in your well-being and well-being is, according to a lot of people, more or less a synonym of quality of life. Perhaps it's not the same, but it certainly comes close. So, how well are you? And that's exactly what I want to know from you. I want you to tell me what your quality of life is. Would you be prepared to score it on a range from 1 to 10? One very bad or as bad as it possibly could be to up to 10, it couldn't be better. Is there anyone here present who would say my quality of life is worth a 10? Please raise your hands. A 9? Yes, some people are hesitating. An 8? Ah, look. People saying a 7. Yes, I see more hands. 6. Yes. Anyone with a five or lower? Who is not very satisfied, whose life, quality of life is not all that good? Well, what does this little experiment really prove today? It means that you all have some idea about what quality of life means for you. <clears throat> but it might mean very different things for different people. Now, what did you have in mind when you were thinking about your quality of life? Was it something like the lovely holiday you're planning to have next year on a sun, sunny and warm place, lovely beaches, palm trees, or perhaps you made a recent beautiful trip that makes you feel good, or perhaps someone is dreaming of a nice car that you would like to drive in and that you're actually getting and going to buy. Other people might be thinking of good things in life such as having dinner with friends, with wine, and good food and company. And I'm sure that most of you will have had their relationships, their partner in mind, living together with someone you love and care for and with, which, with whom you hope to live up to old age in good health. And perhaps, certainly here at the university, some younger people among you perhaps are dreaming of a good career and the new positions you hope to achieve after finishing your studies. But these are just a few aspects or domains of what you might call the good life. <clears throat> Quality of life is all about living a good life. Be happy with the things that you think are important. And it's different for every one of us. Some people live in big cities and love it. The busyness, the theatres, the cafes, the restaurants, and all the people and the noise from traffic. And others will hate that living and are very happy living remote somewhere in the country where everything is quiet at night, where you can hear the birds singing and hear the wind blowing through the trees. So yes, you have an idea about quality of life. 
Now let's look into some history. The first time the concept of quality of life was used, as far as I know, was back in the 1930s by President Roosevelt in the United States, who, when he came into office, <coughs> after the serious financial crisis of the 20s in the last century, he came to office and he wanted to do something about the state of living and the being of the people, the citizens of the United States. And he said that there is more to life than income only. It's not all about money, but there's more to it. It's important that people have good housing, that they have that we can provide homes for people to live in, that people have access to health care. And through Obamacare, we know how difficult that is in the United States. And also, that people have access to education, education and possible education for every one of us. So, that's an attractive uh, meaning of the concept of quality of life. It seemed to hold such a broad and wide range of aspects. Now, in 1948, the World Health Organization said something similar about the concept of health. Sixty years ago, a statement, health is a state of complete physical, mental, but also social well-being, and not just absence of disease. It's actually the World Health Organization telling us 60 years ago, before I was born, that please don't look and don't fo focus only on the patient with the disease, but look at the person as a whole. The person who has an illness, who has complaints, and you want to cure them, but look at the person as a whole. Same thing holds for quality of life, I think. And when we continue, quality of life entered the field of medicine, the concept, and it also entered the field of dementia. Butler, the founder of the National Institute of Aging in the United States, said in his opening statement in 1997 that it should be dedicated to improving the quality of life of the old people. And he also, and that was intriguing, realized that the area, the field of dementia care would be a very promising target area for collaboration and working on it, realizing that quality of life for people with dementia needed and could be improved strongly. Now this is one of the first publications you will find on the internet if you make a search for two terms, two keywords, dementia on the one hand and quality of life on the other. And you see that in 1977 there's a few, and then in the 80s, very few papers, very few studies are published. And then in the 90s it slowly rises and now it reaches a level of up to 300 international studies using the keywords dementia and quality of life. So yes, there is a lot of scientific knowledge and scientific programs and research on interventions, on all sorts of things in a wide range that focus and try to find an outcome in improving quality of life. Whether it works, I'm not sure. But now before we turn to quality of life in dementia, I will rephrase the question because this question has been asked very often to me. Certainly when I started working as a nurse with people with dementia, for instance, children of someone who came to live in the nursing home would ask me, is there any quality in this life? The prospect of Becoming ill with dementia is horrifying for many people, particularly people who do not have any experience with it. And they imagine a lady like this falling asleep in a chair in the morning, an empty table, 
just a glass of water, waiting perhaps for coffee or lunch. And just as this man, again, it's not a nice thing to look at in this way. It's an illustration of the emptiness of the existence that many people would think that people with dementia have. So is there any quality of life in dementia? And I think that the best point to start asking this question is by asking people with dementia themselves. Rosemary Dreus, professor now in the Netherlands, and a colleague of mine, and we, with a number of psychologists and nursing scientists, performed a study some eight, six to eight years ago, where we actually asked people with dementia what they thought was important for their quality of life. What aspects of daily life do you feel have an influence on your quality of life? Now that was a complicated question, so we often rephrased, we had interviews with people, and we asked over 140 persons, like, what makes you feel happy? What is important for you in your life? And also, on the other side, what has a negative influence? What do you do? What do you not like in your life? And we collected the answers and tried to make a kind of summary and name a lot of aspects that actually came up from all those data, all those qualitative data answers. And what you see, and the funny thing is. It's probably just what come out of the study. If I would ask it all of you, I'd get the same range of aspects like that. Financial situation. You might worry about your financial situation, particularly in an economic crisis that we're going through now. Will I still have my job in a year or two years' time? You want to enjoy activities, you want to enjoy the beautiful things of life. <coughs> And this is what people with dementia tell us. A part of those 143 people were living in nursing homes. So they were seriously suffering from dementia in an advanced stage. And other people were receiving daycare. They needed support. So it's not just early onset, <clears throat> but certainly people with serious problems. Now let's look into some of those aspects a little deeper. Effect, the effect of domain, like emotion, feelings, and people would answer things like, cheerfulness is important, a sense of humor, I want to laugh, I want to have some jokes, I want to be happy with my life. Someone would say, when everything around you is good, friendly, and pleasant, a very simple phrase, but it does tell you a lot. Another important thing, being involved in the things around you, meaning also being part of the environment you live in. You are participant, you participate, even if the world around you is becoming smaller because of your dementia. Because we still have to realize that dementia is a very serious condition. It does affect you deeply. Living in the midst of your family, that makes people feel happy. Feeling attached and being understood, that is something people tell us quite often, particularly if they have an idea that they're not understood. That is very frustrating. Let's look into the domain of social contact, which is obvious for everyone. Of course, social relations are important in all of our lives. So, also for people with dementia. Friendships and other relations are still very important 